Hello and welcome to Hardway Learning. Today we're going to go over setting up Tuner Studio for your new Megasquare plug and play. I got my base map from Trubokitty.com. It's basically a guy who builds DIY plug and plays for the Miata community and has worked on and developed base maps for the cars. I got it from Trubokitty.com forward slash town forward slash tune and I scrolled down to the DIY plug and play for MS2 since I have an MS2 plug and play and I went to the base maps and I got the correct model year for my car downloaded that open tuner studio load tune went to my downloads opened that up and usually you will need a project to do all this but I'm not plugged into a car so I can't set up a project but basically this is his base map for a 94 to 97 Miata and there is a few things that you'll need to change and calibrate in order to get started. So we heard some clunking on the front of the car. We're getting passed by the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm basically going to be working from left to right, going through some of the menus that you need to make sure are correct before you try to start the car for the first time. Let's start in basic and load settings. We want to go to engine and sequential settings. We're going to go to required fuel. Uh, the Miata 1.8 liter is 1,839 cc's. We have four cylinders and for the stock injectors is 265 cc's. We're running regular fuel for our, so our AFR target is 14.7. We'll go okay. And then squirts per engine cycle we need to switch this to simultaneous and one basically instead of squirting twice per cycle we're going to go to one per cycle it'll be less affected by dead times and it'll be smoother throughout the rpm range and a little bit more stable in the idle it should just make tuning a little bit easier and more straightforward we'll burn and close that menu so now we'll go into general settings uh depending on if you have a diy plug and play or an ms plug and play two, you will choose different options. With the DIY plug and play, the, there is no dedicated barometric sensor, so you use an initial map reading. That's the built-in map sensor that's used for engine load. But on a Megasquirt two plug and play, we actually have two independent sensors, so we'll do two independent sensors. We'll go to, when I'm plugged in, I get a barrel option on MS plug and play two. Um, but since I'm not plugged into anything, it doesn't show up. And then we will include AFR target. This will allow us to have a true VE table. This adds basically a multiplier to the fueling calculation so that you can change your AFR table and not have to retune your VE table. Now, mat air density table. This, start out when you're still learning how to tune and you're still tuning your VE table, you wanna 100 out everything. Basically what this is doing with new firmware, it no longer needs the ideal gas law built into this table because it is built into the calculation. So for now, we're just gonna do 100% everywhere and then once you have a good tune, we'll talk about that. Now, ego control, we wanna be on single wide band. Don't even try to do narrow band. You should have a wide band if you're going mega squirt. It's gonna make your life 100% easier and if you, you're gonna need it eventually. I like to do 10% correction because if you're leaning on your ego control to do corrections, you are not too well. Burn and close. Next thing we're gonna go to AFR table. This we're gonna leave alone, but just note we're running rich in our idle section. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier to get you know, going down the road. Eventually you can start leaning this out a little bit, but if you lean out idle too much, there's a chance it's gonna become unstable. So that's why we're rich to start out with on the base map. It'll just be easier. To idle more stable we're also leaned out in the cruising sections uh it's low load better fuel economy and then one other thing to note as you creep up in rpm you want to start running more rich and as you go into boost or higher loads you want more fuel therefore more rich uh all these targets i'm going to leave alone to get you started but the only one i'll probably ever change is maybe making some more of these sections leaner down here and then making the idle leaner to make the car a little more fuel efficient but these all should be good and you want them to be rich fueling table this is going to change a lot most likely mine 
changed significantly and we'll talk about it later. Um, this is what you're going to control to go rich or lean. Ignition dead time. Leave this alone if you have stock injectors. Otherwise, put in the values that the manufacturer gives you uh, if you have aftermarket ones. Ignition table. Leave this alone. This was built for Miatas. This is a base map for Miatas. It's most likely, hopefully, conservative. If you start adding too much timing, you will cause detonation. You can damage your engine. Don't mess with it unless you know what you're doing. If you have a knock sensor or deck cans, you can listen and tweak and push your car a little further by adding more timing. But for now, leave it alone. Use at your own risk. Next thing we're going to talk about is tools, unlock calibration, unlock burn flows. Now we are going to calibrate, well, we didn't need to unlock to do our TPS, but basically with the TPS, if you have a 94 or newer, you have a very throttle position sensor. Uh, leave your foot off the gas, get current, it should be somewhere around zero. Mash the gas all the way and hold it, get current, and it should, I don't even know, but it should be much greater than zero. And that will basically tell the computer where your throttle is. Uh, and you should, once you've done that, see this move up and down as you input throttle. Now we will do calibrate map barrel. Uh, for the Mega Squirt Plug and Play 2, we select the 6400 up here. And for the Mega Squirt Plug and Play 2, it's the 4115 down here. And we will do zeros here, zeros here. And if you have the DIY Plug and Play, it's the 4225 for both, since you're sharing your map and barrel with the initial reading. And we'll do zero down here as well. And then in the barometric correction, we want to make sure this is 100% everywhere. You can add barometric correction once you've got your tune dialed in. Basically, if you're making drastic elevation changes, this will add or subtract fuel depending on the elevation change. Next, we will calibrate our thermistor values. Thermistors are measuring temperature. So you have a thermistor on your coolant temperature and your intake temperature. Coolant temperature, we will select RX7 AFM S5 and AFM. That is automatically built, gives us a table for our, for our mega squirt. And so it'll have the known temperature based on the resistance it's measuring. Right to controller, okay. We will then go to our IET and we want to select GM because if you followed us, we bought one from DIY Plug and Play. We bought a GM sensor. They're supposed to be stable, blah, blah, blah. You want the open element so it reacts faster. And that will also be telling the computer how much, what temperature the air is in coming into the intake. The next thing, AFR table, we bought an X-Series. Basically select whatever brand, wideband you bought. Otherwise, you can go to custom linear and look at your data sheet and plug in those values. But we're going to select X-Series. That'll get us close. I'll talk about how to tweak that later. If it's not perfectly matching what your AFR gauge reads on the car versus what you're seeing in Tudor Studio, another video on that. But that should get us close for now. Next thing we want to look at is idle control. If you have a mega square plug and play, you're going to need to invert this for whatever reason. For me, at least, I don't know if there's some jumper messed up, but what I noticed was as I, as my duty cycle went up, it was actually taking a, it was closing the valve more. So if you have a DIY plug and play, I think you'll leave it normal, but for MS plug and play, invert it. We'll leave this here. We'll leave this here. Uh, run before start. So basically it's going to, Bring you to your cranking your cranking idle percentage idle cranking duty it's going to open up that idle valve more to let in more air when you're cranking just to get the car kicked over and then crank to run is how long it's going to be doing that before it goes into your closed loop idle the idle valve frequency the stock idle is 170 hertz uh i tried this base map at 186 and it made a lot of goofy noises so i doubled the stock value of 340 and then it seemed to tame it down i don't know if that's because i'm inverted i don't know if that's because it's the di the ms plug and play and not the diy plug and play but we burn that we close it we're ready to rock and roll there 
Before going too far down the tuning route, be sure to adjust your bass timing. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, but Megasquirt walks you through that step pretty clearly. Basically, you set fixed timing in Tuner Studio, connect a timing light to cylinder one, and check the marks, and ensure that when you set the fixed timing to 10 degrees, that you're seeing the 10 degree mark when the light flashes on the crank fully. I think we should be able to start the car if the car starts without throttle input, that's good. But if you need to add throttle input, you're going to need to up your cranking duty with whatever temperature you're at. So if the car starts and dies after the uh, crank to run taper, so if it starts and then dies, there's a good chance that your initial, your closed loop initial values are too low. I believe mine around 800 are high 30s. So you want to crank these up probably by about 10. It's going to be different for every car depending on where your idle screw is set. I wouldn't mess with your idle screw because if you ever want to go back to the stock ECU, you won't need to tweak anything, but just allow your IACV to be a little more open and that should solve your idle issue. So once the car is started, you're going to want to note what your AFR is. Remember in the idle section, we are targeting 13.8. So if you're too low, which means you're too rich, you're going to take fuel out. If you're too high, so like 14 and up, you're going to add fuel until you're at 13.8. Once we've got a steady idle, you're going to want to come into the output test mode. This will allow us to figure out where the IACV is fully open. I'm going to start at like 45 should be idling somewhere around like 12 1400 rpms start it it'll lock in your iacv and this will allow us to get our fully open and fully closed idle air control valve duty cycle percentages so we're gonna walk this down You'll be at like 500 RPM, and then you're going to wait until it doesn't affect your RPMs anymore. So let's say we're at 27, and we bump it down, and it's still at like 500-ish, and you don't hear it going down at all. That means you've hit the fully closed section of your idle valve, and that means you can put in your minimum value of 24%. You're going to do the same thing on the top end. You're going to go up, you're at 65, you're at like 1800, 1900 RPM, somewhere up there. And once it stops climbing, you know, you bounce off it a little bit, okay. And it doesn't change when you go 71 to 72, you're going to punch 72 into here. And from there, you, sh you can stop testing, it'll idle back down to normal. Um, one other thing, target RPM curve. We'll just get our scale a little bit easier to read. So this is basically what the car is going to be targeting as it warms up. Once the car is warm, we're going to target 850, basically from like 140 and on. So one, let's say 150. Target 850 and then 70, we're going to target 850. So this will just allow to interpolate a little bit better as the engine gets past you know and closer towards it's like one 190 to 200 is normal operating temperature so yeah from there once you've got your fueling figured out down here be sure to go out to diy auto tune and buy a license full version of tuner studio allows you to do tune analyze live that basically will tune the fueling table for you as you're out driving you're going to want to lock out your idle sections which is basically anything 1200 below and then your low load sections it just doesn't interpolate those well but basically you're going to go through all these different rpm and load range it's going to start filling it out. I start out on easy. You also don't want to be changing your tuning too much until your car is warm. So I like to keep it above 170. All these other things are fine. Easy. It'll it'll make changes more quickly with less needed data. And then once you've logged and hit most of these sections, you can switch it up to normal. What what tells you whether you've hit a section or not is this. When it turns green, that means you've got a lot of data points in that section. It's usually easy to hit the cruising sections because you're you're in those sections a lot. Uh, full throttle is more up here. A mid throttle, obviously, low load, coasting. This is like your overrun section. I usually, I guess, I leave this 
second one unlocked. And then my low load is like two to three points lower than the ones that have actually been tuned usually. So with that, stay tuned for more videos. If there's anything you have questions on, if there's something you want me to dive into a little bit more, hit me up in the comments or DM me on Instagram, Hardware Learning. Thanks for watching. Keep Stay tuned. We're going to be turbocharging the car very soon. We have all of the parts. We're going to go over rebuilding the uh, SR20 used turbo that I bought and basically the full install. So keep an eye out. Hit the subscribe button if you're not. Hit the notification button so you know when our latest videos are. Usually on Mondays. Been a little slow lately. Uh, just busy on weekends. Sorry for that. But stay tuned for more Miata videos, more RS3 videos, and good luck with your tuning. And thanks for watching. Thank you.